Hi, how's it going? So, a little recap of where we were up to. Previously, we had created an instance, and I mentioned that when we create an instance, we can optionally uh, pass in some layers. Now, as I said, what a layer is, is um, it inserts itself in function calls and can add extra functionality. Um, in this case, I want to add validation layers. And what a validation layer will do, will check um, debug information. So it'll check that the API is being used correctly and optimally, and we can define also a callback to log um, any errors, basically. So this is debug information that we're putting in. Um, to start with, we probably want to, just like extensions, it's a list of names, we're going to do the same thing for layers. At the moment, it will be completely empty, but um, that's okay. So then we'll pass that down below. Okay, awesome. And I'm also going to create a kind of validation function because at the moment, we don't really have um, any debug stuff. I'm gonna create a function to check whether the set of extensions and layers is supported by our device. So this takes um, the set of extensions, the set of layers and our debug state. And at the moment, we're not doing much with it. So um, what we do is we call this um, enumerate instance extension properties. And there's an argument that it takes, which is um, a layer name. Now that's optional. Okay, so this is saying get um, extension properties based on a specific layer. However, we can pass in none and that works just fine. Okay, then um, what this creates is it creates a list of these um, extension properties structures. And what we want is we want the extension name, which is a string. So I'm just doing a kind of list comprehension to get the name of the extension from, from the list. You know what I mean? Okay, so then let's go ahead and right now we'll just print out um, the list of extensions that we can support. So we're just looping through that and printing out the, the strings. So if we run this right now, then we can see these are all of the um, extensions that our device can support, including we have a surface that will be supported and window 32 surface we're requesting that can be supported as well. Awesome. Luckily we have already bounced these down to strings, which um, doing that up above in the list comprehension is really useful because then it means we can um, do this, this sort of thing here. So extensions is similarly a list of uh, strings. So we get each of those strings, the names, and then we can just go if extension is in that list of strings here. So we're using Python's kind of inbuilt um, element searching function. So we can avoid writing loops and stuff. I mean, under the hood, it's running a loop, but this is fine. Okay, makes the code a bit cleaner. So then, yep. And if it's not, in the supported extensions then return false because the um, the extensions and layers are not supported in, tot in totality. If we get to the end and all of that works, then we can return true. Okay, now we're gonna do exactly the same thing just with layers. Okay, so very similar. We enumerate the layer properties. We extract the name, do a comprehension, okay. And then we just do the, the same, exact same sort of search as before. So we can run this. And yes, uh, all of our 
um, extensions are supported and then down below we can see the set of layers which we can support um, all of these little bits can in insert themselves in the program um, I'm gonna grab validation we want validation uh, no I mean look guys we're fine our self-esteem is fine but you know we want validation layers in our program oh well, hey maybe I want validation if you like the video comment and like and subscribe then we'll request that as well um, awesome so we can run this and uh, yep we are supported cool what is this we want validation we want to be supported uh, okay so cool um, at the moment we've requested um, validation layers and they are supported awesome so they're in our program but the next thing we want to do is we want to set up our own um, debug reporter our, our uh, callback function so what we can do is we go if we're in debug mode uh, I'm thinking of the C++ it's the same thing right just a different name um, so I ran into a few issues here in the C++ um, wrapper as opposed to the Python wrapper they actually use different um, uh, debug callback things so what we can do to get around that is what is this called I think it's extension debug there we go so I'm going to go with debug report and yes that is debug report is supported awesome so we are now requesting the functionality to declare our own debug callback function um, which is good it's supported so that's all good we just need to create that okay so we're done with um, instance for now we'll pop over to main and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a function to get a messenger So if that happens, good. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make a new file because I'm trying to kind of keep this modular um, called logging.py and logging is going to have all the Vulkan stuff. And um, what we want to do is we want to make a function Good. Okay, so we're going to need to take an instance because um, this creation code does depend on having an instance defined. That's fine. We'll get to that in a second. So we're going to have Okay, I think that's okay. I'm just checking the um, the highlighting usually white would indicate that something's gone wrong but I think this is okay okay so there's a little bit to to go through here we're going to define our function for callback um, and it's a little bit kind of there's a few notes I'm gonna post in paste in so um, messages have a bunch of kind of arguments for one thing we have message severity which ranges anywhere from um, just verbose like in info dumps up to like serious warnings and errors and then we have um, message types which you know validation general performance if something's being used in an unoptimal way and note that we also have these um, all 
options, which is just setting, defining everything. This is kind of a future proofing thing. If um, in the future extra bits are added, this will still enable everything. Okay. And then what we've got is uh, when we call this debug under the hood, what's actually happening kind of is we're passing in all of these arguments, but um, they've been compressed down to a single like list of arguments. So to start with, I'm just going to, okay. So I'm just, just as a test, I'm just going to print out all, all of the arguments, which the, um, which the debug message has. Okay. So now to start with, we need some info to create our reporter. The structure type has already been set. Um, the next is none. That's fine for the flags. I'm going to put in the, um, the type, like the severity levels that we're going to go with. Um, then the callback function is defined up above. That's the debug callback. So, uh, by the way, this uh, user data is any like extra data that we that we might want to pass through to the um, the error logger at the same time. Um, but we're going to set that to none for the moment. We're just just printing out the errors. Then the next thing we need to do, so we need to grab the creation function, which most of the time we would just call this create debug report callback, and that would be fine. However, not so um, in this case, because it is outside of the um, kind of core like static stuff, which gets loaded in automatically, which means we need to query it. And we do that with um, this get instance procedure address. So if we click in, then yep, um, we look for it based on our instance. Um, and then we either we find it or we don't. Okay. So also if we look up above this is super useful. So um, these things are called kind of external functions. So we have these ones we can query based on our device. And we have a, a list of them here. And then up above, all of these ones are based on our instance. So we can check this. We can go, where is VK create? Yep, debug callback. Okay, um, so we've got this one here, and then down below we've got um, Vulcan destroy debug callback. So we'll be querying that later. Um, we can also control click into this and find the definition of this one. And this tells us which arguments we need to take. So we take um, the instance, the creation info, and allocator, which again, memory allocator in this case, we're going to set it to none. Um, and the callback function, we can set that to none as well because the callback function was actually defined in the create info. So we're good there. Okay, good. So we've got the creation function and then we can pretty much, pretty much call it. So we have instance create info callback. Yep, good. So instance create info and allocator is none and callback is by default none. Okay, awesome, good. So um, this has created our debug messenger, our error logger. So we can go back and we can run it and we have triggered an error, that's okay. So as we say, as it says here, debug messenger has eight components. We look at the components here, it looks like um, the first uh, the first component of the debug, debug message is actually the number of arguments. Okay, fair enough. 
um, if we're going to pass in a variable number of things, we want to know how many we're passing in. Okay, so we have these kind of numbers, which I don't, I'm not too worried about that. Then we have these ones. So we have uh, validation, which is, I guess, the type of error, and then the error message. So if we look through this, we have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So 5 and 6 are super important. So now we can just format that a little bit better. Okay, awesome. Um, and I think not super necessary, but I think it's also because in the in the C API, the debug callback returns a um, returns a boolean indicating kind of whether we're going to call this a success or not. <laughs> um, so in this case, we're just going to return zero. Cool. Okay, so everything works, everything works. And then we go goodbye, see you. So we're going to clean up and then we get an error. And the error is saying that basically we need to destroy the debug messenger. Okay, fair enough. So that's cool that we've got that working. Now we'll go to the close function and we'll destroy the messenger. So um, again, we need to query um, for the procedure address based on our instance to get the destruction function. And then we call that function and um, yeah, there it is. So run this again. And now it's all working, no errors. Okay, so in this video, we had a look at layers. We had a look at querying which extensions and layers our device can support. And we also looked at creating a, um, a custom debug callback function and registering that with the program. We also had a look at querying uh, for procedure addresses, which is loading, loading functions in dynamically as we need them. Okay. I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.